Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning here at Faith Lutheran Church of Coon Rapids. Warm welcome to those who are joining online. I'm Pastor Kevin. Pastor Marsha is preaching out at Lord of Life uh, in Ramsey this morning. Uh, their pastor, uh, David Luckold, had been hospitalized with a heart attack, and so we've been covering. And uh, so she's there, and our visitation pastor, Pastor Ken, is helping assist this morning. A uh, couple of announcements, well, a few announcements. So our new mobile app, uh, it launched last Sunday, and there's a lot of enthusiasm about this new technology as a tool for ministry. So we're going to be able to roll out more features and provide training. And so we invite uh, all that are worship volunteers, uh, anyone looking to become a worship volunteer, anyone who might need help downloading the app, uh, to head to the choir room after worship today and uh, for a brief training. And Hannah and Olivia are gonna cover how this new app will simplify scheduling for communion servers, ushers, worship volunteer roles, um, you know, all of these things. So ask them, don't ask me. Okay. Um, our next senior luncheon is going to be uh, Tuesday and uh, uh, tickets are on sale uh, in the gathering area and come and hear storyteller Laura Packer enjoy chicken with lemon chive sauce. Uh, the annual Day for Girls event is coming Wednesday, April 17th from 9 to 11.30 in the harbor and uh, women are invited to come and band together to make, to make sustainable feminine hygiene kits for other women around the globe and these products are critical to keep girls in school and on the job breaking the cycle of poverty, restoring dignity to these women. So you're invited to come. Um, we celebrate the, the sacrament of holy baptism with Henry today, six months old. So welcome families and uh, friends. Uh, also, the ordination of Emily uh, Brown, uh, Pastor Valerie brown Greenley, who is a pastor here. Her daughter's being ordained next Saturday. And uh, all are invited to come. That's going to be at 3 o'clock. And she's going to be installed as the pastor at uh, Our Fathers uh, Lutheran in Rockford uh, next Sunday. And uh, Nick and Diane Ayala, uh, they're celebrating their 53rd wedding anniversary, and they brought some cake in the fellowship hall for us afterwards. So appreciate that. Yes. So great when God gathers us together uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit when we can come and we can worship together. And so I invite you to rise as we begin our worship service. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you, through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. <laughs>
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King. Righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. All right, you may be seated, and if there are any kids here today who want to come on up for kids' time, you are welcome. And if you have any noisy offering you want to drop in the bucket, you are welcome to do so too. Come on up. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Happy spring. Almost like summer weather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> welcome, welcome, everybody. Good to see you all. Awesome. Well, my friends, I'm wondering today if there has ever been a time where you may have gotten hurt and maybe you got an ouchie or a boo-boo or a scratch or a scar. Has anybody ever had that before? Yeah. I'd like to tell you about the scar that's on my hand. It looks, you know, not the best, right? But it doesn't have a super epic story. Uh, how I got the scar is I have a really, really sassy cat. And her name is a Minion. And one day I was petting her, and she did not want to be pet anymore. But I loved petting her, so I kept petting her, and she kept meowing at me, telling me to stop, and she scratched me pretty good on my hand, right? How many of you have ever gotten a scratch mark from something that you want to share? Yeah. Well, it's not really much of a scratch, but I did get bit by my grandma's cat. Oh, you got bit by a cat? Yeah, that happens. Anyone else have a story of a time they may have gotten hurt and it left a mark? Yeah? Ooh, yeah, got kicked during a game probably, yeah. Or maybe you fell off a slide. It happens, right? But it kind of tells a story, right? Sometimes when people see it, they go, what happened, right? And you tell your story. 
Well, in our Bible story today, we are learning about how Jesus died but rose from the grave. And his disciples, Jesus' disciples, who were kind of like Jesus' friends, knew that he was resurrected, that he was alive again. And Jesus came to visit them, and Jesus showed them the scars on his hands and his feet from when he died on the cross, but they were healed. And I don't know about you, but I seem to remember people by their faces. Like, I can remember people really well by their faces. How many of you remember people by what their faces look like, right? Yeah. But in this instance, they remembered Jesus by the scars on his hands and his feet. And there's a lot that we can learn about someone's hands and feet, right? How many of you during Easter time dyed some Easter eggs? Yeah? How many of you maybe got some of that egg dye on your fingers? That stays a long time, doesn't it? How many of you have ever gotten a bunch of markers on your hands from coloring a lot? Yeah. How many of you have maybe ran outside in your bare feet, and then your parents say, wipe off your feet when you come in the house, or you have to wash off your feet? Because you've got muddy feet, right? Yep. These things can tell a story. And Jesus told his story with the scars on his hands or his feet. But our hands and our feet are also a way that we can show how we can serve others and show them God's love. We can use our feet to travel places to serve others, right? We can use our hands to color cards for people or give them high fives to encourage them, maybe to pack bags of food or to worship, right? And our hands and our feet can tell an incredible story, just like Jesus. So I want you to think about how you want to use the story of your hands and your feet this week. Yeah? Okay. For our prayer this week, instead of putting our hands together, I want us to put our hands on our feet for the prayer. Right? Okay. Repeat after me. We're going to say, Dear God, thank you for the story of your scars. Help us to use our hands and our feet to love and serve you. In your name we pray and play. Amen. All right, my friends, you can head on back to your seats. Thanks so much for coming up today. The first reading is from 1 John chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. 
He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. He took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. When Callie Joe was inviting the kids, instead of folding their hands like peanut butter and jelly, but to touch their feet, I don't think I can do that. And uh, <laughs> think about that. You know, when I was uh, when I was eight or nine years old, uh, I remember my family attending uh, Easter worship services at Trinity Lutheran in Spring Grove, where I grew up, where uh, Pastor Ken, who is assisting today, was our pastor, and he would have been preaching that Sunday. But I wasn't feeling good, and so uh, I wasn't able to attend worship. I was laying on a couch at home, sick with a fever. And I have this memory of my family coming in the door after Easter worship, uh, and one of my sisters, who will remain unnamed because she's probably watching on the live stream today, uh, I remember one of my sisters coming through the door, and she said, you missed Easter. You missed Easter. And they were talking about all of the things that had happened. You know, there was singing, there was special music, the brass and the trumpet players were there, Easter flowers, the Easter breakfast, all the people who were there. And all I remember is feeling sad and feeling sick and that I had missed Easter. And I was thinking about that this week from that memory because Sometimes celebration days, sometimes they can be miserable days. Uh, Periods of celebration for some people can maybe be times of of depression or discouragement for others. And rereading these resurrection stories in the Gospels uh, with this reality in mind, uh, we can surprise, we can be surprised to find there in the Gospels what we experience here. The ancient Bible stories about the resurrection of Jesus, they, cont- they contain a mixture of joy and sadness and a combination of delight and discouragement at the same time. And just as news of Christ's resurrection called, caused this surge of joy with the believers, other believers experienced a loss of hope. In the gospel of Luke today, in our text, it tells us on the very day of the resurrection, as word of, of Christ's presence swept through Jerusalem, there were two people. They were downcast and they were disheartened disciples of Jesus. They were headed towards Emmaus to forget the whole matter. And Easter came and some folks missed it. And it happened in Jerusalem, and it happens here also. It happens every year. Seems that Jesus arose from the dead, and not even all of his former followers realized his presence. Some people miss Easter. And I'm wondering, what about you this morning? For whatever reason, did you miss Easter this year? And I'm not asking if you were present or absent from worship on Easter Sunday. It's more of a concern about the experience of the resurrection. We don't have to be out of church on 
Easter Sunday to miss Easter, just as people did not have to be out of Jerusalem to miss the risen Christ. Maybe you were in a worship service and you saw the joy around you, but you didn't sense any joy within you. Or maybe you heard the alleluias resound in the sanctuary, but you realized that they found no real resonance in your heart. And maybe you listened to the reading of these resurrection stories, but they fail to find any meaning in your life. Then this, if that's you this morning, uh, this message is for those who missed Easter. Because if you missed Easter, I just want to share a couple of truths that come from this text that address you. And the first is that Jesus understands. This is the first truth. If you missed Easter, Jesus understands. The Gospels of the New Testament, they, they don't demand that we understand Christ. Rather, they offer the burden, the burden lightning insight that Christ understands us, that Jesus gets us. We, we don't have to understand Easter to experience Easter. I, I took my car to the mechanic uh, last week. There was an electrical problem. I don't understand the computer, the electrical parts uh, of the system, but I trust that when everything works well, the lights uh, will turn on when I need them and everything will run predictably well. In Christ's capacity for understanding, it, it defies or it disregards our comprehension. Jesus, who, who taught us to pray, accepts people who are so troubled that they can't pray. How many times have you ever felt like you don't have the words? I don't know how to pray. I'm paralyzed by whatever this issue is, or I'm so sad, or I'm, so, you know, I can't, I don't have the words. And we're told, again, Romans 8, the Holy Spirit prays for us with sighs too deep for words. Even when we don't know how to pray, we can say help. Jesus, who offers salvation, identifies with people perplexed by feelings of, of lostness, of feeling lost. Jesus, who offers unmatched encouragement, knows us better than any other, the depths of discouragement. We see that all over the scriptures. And so, do you understand? Do you grasp the meaning? If you don't sense the joy of Easter morning, if you have not felt Christ rise, if you can't even shout, Alleluia, that doesn't mean that you drop your head and you take off towards Emmaus or some other place to just give up. Jesus understands. Jesus understands you, your situation in its entirety. And so Christ then appears. The presence of Christ among us does not depend on our quality of our understanding of Christ or even upon the nature of our reception of Jesus' presence. Christ appears in the midst of people not even looking for him. Jesus appeared to a woman who intended to anoint his dead body. She didn't have the slightest suspicion that Jesus might be alive. Jesus appeared to two despondent travelers. They're worn out because of their grief. Grief, we, grief will wear you out. We know that. We have a whole bunch of people that come on Tuesday nights to our grief groups, and they share this journey. And it's tiring, and it's weary. And Jesus appears to these two travelers on the road to Emmaus who are just weary, and they weren't looking for Jesus. They were only trying to pick up the pieces of a shattered faith and carry on without Jesus. And so unexpected of the resurrection were the disciples of Jesus that when Jesus walks into their midst, some thought he was a ghost and they refused to believe what they saw. None of the resurrection appearances of Jesus were marked by dramatic, dra dramatic settings. I can't say that, dramatic settings or majestic or royal greetings. Jesus was mistaken for a gardener. He showed up on a dusty road. He walked a shoreline watching his disciples fish and notice the common uh, sights of Jesus' appearance and the ordinary routines where he just showed up, just blessed 
their presence. We don't have to tour an empty tomb in a garden in Jerusalem to know the reality of Easter. Even if we couldn't sing hallelujahs on Easter Sunday, we can know Jesus is real and Jesus is alive. Christ comes to our world just in the ordinary moments, at meal times, in fun times, amidst our work, amidst our serving, in the face of our worries. Jesus comes to people of faith, to individuals who are plagued by doubts, those in hospital rooms, those that are in hospice. He comes to offices. He comes to clinics. He comes to bedrooms. He comes to sanctuaries. And if you missed Easter, please know that Jesus understands and still appears. Christ interprets us. Jesus understands us. The Bible bears a witness to this consistent correlation, and it's a connection between meeting Christ and achieving a measure of, of sort of the self-understanding of ourselves. And it certainly happened on that day on the road to Emmaus. The risen Christ who comes to us and understands us interprets us interprets us to better understand ourselves, uh, uh, understanding the pain of rebellion against God in relationship to the joy of obedience of following God. This exhaustion of despair in relation to this exhilaration of hope. The grief of anxiety that we might feel in relation to the peace of assurance. Christ challenges us when we need challenging. Jesus warns us when we need warning. Jesus affirms us when we need affirming. Jesus loves us when we need loving, when we need to feel loved. Jesus corrects us when we need correcting, directs us when we need directing. And Christ will take us where we are Show us where we ought to be and assist us in getting there. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And yes, there's one more thing. Christ commissions us. So I dig back to some of my old seminary notes, and this, it, this comes today. Jesus commissioned to ministry every person to whom he appeared as the risen Christ. And Jesus invites us to use our gifts and in, invites us to use our lives to make the world a better place, not only for ourselves, but for our neighbor. And communion with Christ and commission from Christ are inseparable. Sharing the gospel and caring for people are non-negotiables for people who have been found or who have found the Easter experience. That's what we're told. And we must all... Hear the commission of Christ, both those who are looking for something to do and those who seem too busy to do anything else. It's in the faithfulness to the commission of Christ that we discover this real fullness of communion of Jesus. And so here's the note that I found from my seminary professors. They'd be so happy. Um, to find the resurrected Lord, we must look among the homeless the bereaved, the suffering, the abused, and the hungry, right, right where Jesus told us they would be. Christ is found in the unlovable, where the unlovable are loved, and the grieving are comforted, where the bread and the cup are blessed and consumed. So years ago, serving in youth ministry in a church and uh, one of the things that we would do to connect the students is we would bring students together from all different suburbs and schools to do a youth musical. And we'd take a tour. And uh, we'd go on the road and we'd get the kids on the bus and we would travel. And, uh, and we, our, our, one of our rehearsals, something really uh, dramatic happened. You know, we're practicing this drama. But we would have a Bible study uh, taking apart the script and the text um, uh, for what we were doing. And as part of our rehearsals, um, we had this Bible study that was sharing about God's love and compassion for us. 
And we had a teenage girl in our group that joined us for the musical. And uh, she, she um, had never been in our dramas before, a member of our church. And she wanted to sing, and she came, and her name was Carrie. Carrie had Down syndrome, and she was usually very happy and friendly to everyone. And she began during that rehearsal, she began just crying and wailing. And we all stopped, and Carrie said, I don't know why God loves me. Why does God love me? And she just began to cry loudly. She goes, why does God love me so much? And it was as if a switch went on in her heart and uh, where she suddenly had heard these promises each week, but it suddenly went deep into her soul. And she wept, and she wept, and the entire cast sat transfixed, staring in awe as Carrie taught us all this valuable lesson that there in the midst of rehearsal, she reminded us of the wonder of God's love for us. And it was so uh, interesting in the sense of it brought our cast together and it reminded us of we need to be reminded all the time of God's love for us. It happened with a pastor over a century ago. I was reading about uh, William, uh, Robert William Dale, a pastor in the 1800s. Like many other pastors, he had preached a score of Easter sermons. And one year, something, something different happened. He was completely overwhelmed when he came to the phrase, he is risen. And never before had that truth dawned so forcefully, so realistically on him. And uh, he was transformed. And so he did something in that church in the 1800s. He instituted, he went to their council, their church council. He instituted a policy calling for the singing of an Easter hymn every single Sunday of the year. And so that one who had missed Easter previously, he wanted to be sure that no one missed Easter repeatedly. So they included an Easter song every year. Friends, for whatever reason, if you missed Easter two weeks ago, you can experience it today. Jesus understands and eventually appears. Christ interprets us. Christ commissions us. And today, right now, the risen Christ waits to be our living Lord. And maybe the only way that we can move from uh, crushing despair to numbing loneliness is to see, is to see this amazing power and this invitation that comes from Jesus. And that's okay, because even if we missed Easter before, we can say with so many before us, we can say Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. And we welcome the risen Christ into our lives with this intimate and personal confession, my Lord and my God. And for that, we say thanks be to God. Amen.
have the sacrament of holy baptism as we celebrate with Henry uh, Huling, and we invite uh, parents and sponsors as we come to the font. And he was fast asleep a few moments ago. We'll see. <laughs> yep, he's sleepy. Well, God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. And by water and word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We're united with all the baptized into the one body of Christ and anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. So Thomas and Nicole, Michael and Sarai, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and the love of God, do you desire to have Henry baptized into Christ? If so, say, we do. And as you bring Henry to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with the responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him faithfully to the services of God's house, teaching him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, Care for others and the world that God made and work for justice and peace. Parents and sponsors, do you promise to fulfill these obligations to help Henry grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, we do. Yeah. And people of God, do you, do you promise to support this child and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, please respond, we do. We do. Well, I ask you to profess faith in Christ Jesus to reject sin and confess the faith of the church? Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, we do. We do. And I invite the congregation to stand. And with the whole church, let us confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. And let us pray. Blessed are you, holy God. You are creator of the waters of the earth. You poured out your spirit on your people Israel, and you breathed life into our dry bones. Your son Jesus promised to send the spirit to us that the world may know your peace and truth. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Henry. Wash away sin in this cleansing water and breathe new life into him as he is now baptized. By your spirit, adopt us all as your children through our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, we'll bring Henry to the front. Okay, we'll bring him right here. Oh. <laughs> Henry Marcel Hewling, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Um, I understand. <laughs> Henry Marcel Healing, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And parents and sponsors, let's lay hands on Henry as we pray for him. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and your sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Henry with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
All right. Well, Thomas and Nicole, we know that you have one of the most important roles as parents, Henry, so we pray for you too. God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon Thomas and Nicole. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for Henry. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with their child the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let me give you this here. We have a baptismal candle. We light from the Christ candle. Just a reminder that as Henry grows up, that he will use his gifts and talents for the Lord. And to remind us to let your light so shine before others that they will glorify God and uh, share in that blessing. And um, we have a gift for Henry. And we want to give this to you. Inside is a prayer, a shawl little baby blanket for Henry and a baby Bible for him as you read to him. And I'm just going to invite you to step out over here so we can, we'll have a welcome on the screen. And we will welcome Henry together. Let's share it together. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Let's give God thanks for this new life here. His eyes are open and he's greeting everybody. So, all right. You can blow up the candle and, and go back to your seats. Uh, in just a little bit, we're going to take our morning offering. And we want to thank all that, is, that have helped uh, contribute to our capital appeal. We were, have been working on it this spring as we make improvements to our facility and campus. And uh, we've had a great uh, uh, response. Uh, uh, we're on our way to $900,000, and it's an incredible. And so thank you to all who have contributed. There's still time as we uh, look towards, towards meeting our goal. If you haven't had a chance to respond, you can do so through our office, online, uh, or in the pew. Uh, there's a capital appeal uh, brochure that lets you know more about it. Thank you so much, and your uh, giving makes a huge difference. And so we invite our ushers forward as we receive our morning offer.
lives up to you. We are an offering. We are an offering. We have a, a sung response for the prayers today, so we're going to sing it through. I, Amy's going to play it through once, and then we'll sing it through. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. Lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. God of grace. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express all. O God, our Creator, you bring forth li all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places. Protect the climate that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express all. Oh God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to Oh God, our older, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty, especially those people we name in our hearts. God of grace. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express all. Oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministries. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express all. Oh God, our resting place. Your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember today our beloved who have died. But especially today, we remember all of the people in the Middle East who have died, in Palestine, in Ukraine, in all the places that are in the midst of war. So as we remember and share their love, 
Comfort all who mourn in our world. God of grace. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. Oh. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. <clears throat> Alleluia. Christ is risen. the God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today. And thank you for those who are online. And I invite those who are here, Fellowship Hall, Community Hour, come and meet someone new, have some coffee and celebrate with some cake and some cookies. And so, alleluia, go in peace, rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.
I love the people of Faith Lutheran the most. We have an authentic sense of community that is filled with joy. And I believe that undergirds our purpose of being a loving and serving community, both inside our walls and as we reach out to our neighborhood to have influence in the world around us. You know, our goal is to connect everybody into a relationship with God and how we do that is through our worship, it's through our learning, it's through our serving, it's, it's for our care for one another. We are a congregation that comes from uh, many different suburbs and uh, many different places and different walks in life, but our unity is in Jesus. And uh, we are a church that is following Jesus and learning what it means to be a disciple. Faith is a community of Christians that tries to live out the gospel of Jesus Christ. We believe we are called to find the lost, heal the broken, feed the hungry, release the prisoner to bring peace to our community. In our collective effort to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly every day, Faith provides a space for individuals to nurture their spiritual lives. We offer teaching, music, sermons, and scripture readings that can inspire, challenge, and deepen one's understanding of their relationship with God. Faith is a place for personal growth, self-reflection, and introspection. Through prayer, praise, and worship, we find solace, gain clarity, and develop a deeper understanding of ourselves and our relationship with God. Faith also provides a safe space for individuals to explore their doubts and seek answers to existential questions. Faith provides a place to belong, offering opportunities to connect with others, share our stories, both give and receive support, and engage in the work of helping others. The fellowship found in our faith community can foster friendships, support networks, and a sense of accountability. In times of joy or struggle, the support and encouragement from the faith community can be invaluable. Our Children, Youth, and Families Ministry is an important part of our mission. We strive to help nurture a strong faith foundation, offer opportunities that allow families to connect and serve together, and create an environment for friendships to grow and thrive. With our nursery, faith kids, confirmation, high school ministry, summer programs, and more, there is always a place for your family to love, serve, and find community together. At Faith, we know that each person is a child of God, wonderfully made, dearly loved, and precious in God's sight. So we welcome everyone to our church. Come and be a part of a loving, serving community of believers who are engaged in the work of bringing Christ's message of love and restoration to the world. This is Faith.